Welcome to Victim's View, a show produced by the Solicitor General's Office. I'm Carmen Smith, the Solicitor General. The Prosecuting Attorneys Council of Georgia is a state agency that provides training, resources, and support for district attorneys and solicitors generals in the state. Among their many priorities is the focus on domestic violence and sexual assault. With us today, domestic violence and sexual assault resource prosecutor, Charlotte Jackson. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on your show. Well, we appreciate everything that you do, but for our viewers, let's get a little background on what the Prosecuting Attorneys Council does. Okay. The Prosecuting Attorneys Council is a state agency. Um, it's comprised of nine members, uh, solicitors and district attorneys from throughout the state. Um, and we are basically a training, human resources, and technical support agency. And so we provide uh, human resources for the 800, well, about 800 state prosecutors throughout Georgia. We provide training in the areas of domestic violence and sexual assault, traffic safety, asset forfeitures, and any other needs that prosecutors have throughout the year. We have two major training conferences. We have a winter conference and a summer conference, which um, gives professional development and continuing legal education studies for all of our prosecutors in the state. Um, we're available to answer calls. We work with law enforcement and nonprofits, so we're, we, we're pretty busy. It sounds like you're very busy. Is there an executive director or uh, other staff there to get is. your mission accomplished? Yes, there is. The executive, sta the executive director is Chuck Spahas. He's the He was a, the solicitor of Henry County, and then he took on the role as executive director. We also have 36 members. We have a training division, an administrative division, fiscal services, and IT, who provides um, IT services for uh, many op other offices throughout the state. And when they provide these services, would you say that the differences between the northern part of the state and the southern part of the state, or is it the same all around, or have you encountered uh, providing that resource to be somewhat of a challenge because of the differences in Georgia? I don't really see it as a challenge. We provide resources. We provide resources to the best of our ability throughout the state of Georgia, and we tweak our programs or do whatever we have to do to make sure that we are available and helpful to whoever needs our help. Well, let's talk a little bit about Ms. Jackson. Okay. Uh, what is your role with the Prosecuting Attorneys Council? I'm the domestic violence and sexual assault resource prosecutor. I have been a prosecutor for 22 years. I started out as a City of Atlanta solicitor. Um, I did that for seven years. I loved it. I did quite a few domestic violence cases in addition to everything else that came in the door. And the thing that really struck me about um, prosecuting those cases then is I got the domestic violence victims hours after the incident happened. And so I saw the process that they went through. Um, then I moved over to the district attorney's office where I prosecuted felonies for 15 years. Everything from armed robberies to homicides to domestic violence, sexual assaults, all of those cases. My last several years, though, I served as a community prosecutor. Um, I loved it. I loved doing the community outreach, combining that with a prosecution of repeat offenders. Um, it really helped me with my communication skills, but it also helped me to develop programmatic skills, and I'm really able to combine my prosecution experience with my programmatic and outreach skills to be a more effective resource prosecutor for PAC. Well, I would think that your background has made you probably the top most candidate for this particular position, and I'm sure you're prepared for the challenges that it has re revealed itself over time. Um, as you go along, though, I would wonder if, um, when you talk about domestic violence um, as a crime, that you have discovered that throughout your various background and experiences that we do have to make clear to the public when we're talking about these things and what prosecutors do. I, I know when we talk about uh, questions that we get, we get a lot of questions from the defendants because they think that we, we represent them or we can quote unquote help them. But we want to know, um, we want the victims to know that we're there to help them as well. 
So among the many things that PAC does, you mentioned the training and everything else, the other focuses. Uh, do they also focus on other area, other crimes in the state? For basically any crime in the state. Um, we kind of step in where other prosecutors can't go. And so, for example, if there's a conflict of interest, a, maybe a um, district attorney's family member or someone in the office or any other reason that a district attorney or solicitor general cannot handle a case, those conflict cases are sent to our office for prosecution. And I actually have a few conflict cases right now. Um, it could be, um, the tr we do a lot of the DUI law. We do pretty much anything that comes in the door we will handle. And it's part of our conflicts. And part of your, your charge as being a resource. I would imagine you work with other agencies throughout the state? Work with um, individual prosecutors as well as other agencies. For example, I got a call um, yesterday from a police department wanting more training for um, their police officers and um, I'm helping to set up training for them. It could be an attorney calling me to ask me about a legal issue which happens pretty frequently. It could be um, someone needing help setting up a conference. Right now I'm working with one of the other state agencies um, that provides funding to all agencies and organizations that are training in the state to help coordinate training so that we're all training on the same information at the same time and being good stewards of our resources. And what about with law enforcement? Because I know that's an important element um, in order to actually hold the defendants accountable. Not necessarily, we're not just trying to get a, you know, a, a verdict of guilty on every case. We're trying to get justice for those victims. So I would imagine you also work with a number of other agencies like the Georgia Commission on Family Violence, uh, Partnership Against Domestic Violence, and, and orga other organizations like that as well. Yes, I'm actually funded by the Governor's Office of Children and Families. My position is funded under their grant. I work very closely with the Georgia Commission on Family Violence. They are a great resource. They provide um, a lot of the statistical, I try to um, at attack my job in a d from a data-driven perspective, and a lot of the data that I get comes from the commission. Um, I work with the Georgia Coalition Against Domestic Violence very carefully. Uh, they have really helped me with developing my trainings. One of the things that I try to do when I'm training, I train prosecutors, law enforcement officers, and victim advocates, and one of the things that I try to do with my training is model what prosecutors should be doing and in training with these three, um, training to meet these three groups, I want to show prosecutors um, things that they should be doing and working with these agencies has really helped me to develop trainings that are consistent with that purpose. And for the, you know, again, for the sake of our viewers, I think they need to understand the difference between what a district attorney's office does and what a solicitor's office does. So could you explain that a little bit? Yes, uh, district attorneys, represent, uh, prosecute felony cases. And essentially, the, the long and short of it is, district attorney's offices prosecute felony cases, the armed robberies, the sexual assaults, the aggravated assaults, uh, the burglaries, those crimes. Solicitors prosecute traffic cases, um, domestic violence, misdemeanors, and um, cases such, like, such as that. And, and in general, a felony is any case that has a sentence of more than a year, and a misdemeanor is any case that has 12 months or less. And some so of those domestic, those uh, uh, misdemeanors crimes would be uh, simple battery, simple assault, and things of that nature Correct. that may be related to a domestic violence incident or. Correct. In many, many cases, we may find out after the fact that it did have something to do with the relationship between the parties. So it's a little more personal when we talk about the domestic violence cases. Correct, and you know, I, sometimes you'll say, oh, they were just fighting, which people try to minimize it, but the they were just fighting case that gets to your office, if we don't get on top of those cases and do an appropriate prosecution or an appropriate diversion for services becomes, unfortunately, the very serious aggravated assault or God forbid, the murder. Yes, and that's so unfortunate it's, yes. to go from a slap or a hit to a knife or death. Yes, but it can happen very quickly if we're not careful in how we address the cases. Oh, most definitely. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to learn more about 
the PAC's resources for the victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. Welcome back to Victims View. I'm talking to Charlotte Jackson, Resource Prosecutor for the Prosecuting Attorneys Council of Georgia. Now, you learn a lot about what PAC does. What specifically have, have challenges have you taken on? I understand you do a newsletter. I do a newsletter. I love doing it. I just finished a newsletter on the, I guess, the hottest topic on domestic violence in Georgia, and that is the issue of strangulation. Strangulation, what some people would think of as choking, is actually a um, very serious crime. Uh, choking is actually when you have something caught inside your throat. Strangulation is when someone closes off your airway or your blood vessels in your neck, leading to brain damage. And uh, pressure as small as a handshake can cause brain damage. And so we're really trying to get the word out, but we also wanna make sure that when victims of domestic violence are strangled, that these cases are handled appropriately and that felony sentences are imposed. One of the things um, for domestic violence victims out there that we want them to know is that if you have been choked or strangled, please, please, please seek a medical attention immediately. It may seem like you may not see any visible injuries on the outside, but on the inside, you can have tiny little blood vessels breaking in your brain causing you to have a higher incidence of stroke, heart attack, brain damage, or even death. And so as time goes on, we're going to be doing more education throughout the state about the issue, but um, thank you for asking about me about that so I have the opportunity to talk about that today. Now, is that newsletter available to anyone? The newsletter is on the PACGA.org website. Click on Publications, Family Violence Publications. You should be able to have access to all of those um, newsletters. In addition to um, the, car the articles, the general articles, we also provide a case law update so that attorneys, rather than having to do the research themselves, are able to quickly get updated on the latest case law so that they can apply that in their prosecutions. And we've also included a resource guide in the back so that um, if you wanted to do more reading about the topics of domestic violence or sexual assault, we've clicked, um, added several links to provide that information as well as some very interesting publications. And I think that's a wonderful way in which uh, attorneys can learn about new things in the law and to also probably address some of those questions that they have in their minds rather than having to go to a full training about it. It is so wonderful to have that resource of a newsletter that they can also get that information from you. And, and I was wondering, is, what is your contact information? So can someone email you directly? They can. They can email me at sdjackson at pacga.org. Okay, and I was wondering also, when you talk about that, that training statewide, uh, do you do anything with the task forces in the state? I do. One of my uh, goals, one of my missions is to help support task forces throughout the state of Georgia. And when we talk about task forces, we're talking about the domestic violence task forces. Statistics have shown areas that do not have functioning task forces have higher rates of domestic violence fatalities. And so I'm working with the commission, the Commission on Family Violence, to um, provide support for those areas that do not have task forces so we can get them up and running and hopefully reduce our rate of homicide. Um, as of the most recent set of statistics says that Georgia is number 12 in the nation for domestic violence homicides. And I want Georgia to be number one, but not for that reason. I totally agree. I think that uh, the Fulton County Domestic Violence Task Force is very active in trying to get the various partners together at the same table so we can address these issues um, as a group. And it's very uh, unfortunately that, unfortunate that some places in Georgia don't have the resources that we have here in Fulton County. I was wondering, um, 
again about the difference between those resources that are that you make available how wonderful and helpful that will be for those jurisdictions that don't have as many resources as we have in Fulton County. That is, uh, I guess, my heart and soul. I, I guess one of the reasons I became a prosecutor was to help the underserved and to help the powerless to have justice. And um, being given the opportunity to provide resources, you think about families that may be in areas you know, where there is a long distance between services. Um, they may be in, uh, you know, they're in very rural areas where there's just not a lot of people and not a lot of resources. And to be able to collaborate with those communities to help them to bring some resources to that area will be very meaningful to me. So I, I see some travel in your yes. <laughs> future <laughs> the, throughout the state because we do have a very large state. Yes. And I would think that that is going to be a interesting challenge for you to bring the parties together. Uh, especially if they haven't had an active task force. A lot of people have started them. Some of them haven't done as well as others. And, and really it comes down to addressing what the needs are in their community. That's true. Um, I love to travel. Uh, I've already started my training roadshow, so I've been to very many areas of Georgia that I've never been to before. And, you know, I love meeting new people. And people are people. and. You know, we all have our needs and we just kind of meet people where they are. But I'm really looking forward to working with my partners to um, bring, bring these services to the people that really need them. Are you open to other uh, means of outreach? Um, what if a school needed someone to come in as a speaker, for example? If my schedule permits, I'm open to, to helping the way, you know, helping to, way that, to the way that I'm needed, in the way that I'm needed to help. Um, you know, that's fine. I actually had a call recently for, for training, and although I may not have the opportunity to travel to this area of Georgia for training, maybe I'll be doing a webinar to help them get the information that they need in the way that they need it. And so I'm, I'm here to serve. And that is something that we all try to do. Um, again, it is just wonderful in Fulton County. We have so many different resources, but I would hope that we could help others with our, you know, our experience as a task force in Fulton County, working with those other jurisdictions that may not have the resources that we have. For example, I think it's a shame we have so few uh, shelters throughout the state, and a lot of times victims just have nowhere to go, and they may have to leave their county and go to another county for services. And the same with the prosecutors. There may only be the prosecutor who's elected and maybe one assistant. And it's great that you will be providing some support and assistance to those people as well, I would imagine. I try to give extra special attention to some of the prosecutors in the rural areas who may not have those resources. Um, just even having come from an area where there's lots of resources, there's also lots of cases. And I, it, it gets stressful sometimes. Um, it can be discouraging. It's sometimes difficult. Um, sometimes working in the field of domestic violence where you see the terrible things that people do to each other and over and over again can be a little disheartening and put that on top of working in a rural area where there's not a lot of resources and you're the only one and as part of my outreach and training one of the things I do try to send the message to those prosecutors and those police officers is to try to send that message of hope and that feeling of camaraderie because I don't want them to feel like they're by themselves. We're all in this together and we all have this same issue that we all need to address. And I think by sharing what we have, we can really make a difference. I am so happy to hear you say that because I think that being in metropolitan Atlanta, we, we kind of get used to the fact that we have resources and we can always uh, share the load with others. Um, I think throughout the state we've found that as a challenge with solicitors general in particular, those who work part-time, um, and we're always open to sharing with them in the Georgia Association of Solicitors General, and it's the same thing when it comes to victims. There are enough victims out there for all of us to help. So as a community, we need to come together in those task forces to help those victims, and as the state, I think it is shameful, our, you know, our rate of violence that we have against particularly women in the state. But as you said, this is just another resource for the prosecutors as well as those victims is having you. So we're glad that, that you're around to do that type of thing. But I, I would think that um, 
you would be open for more challenges to come because we never know what's going to be in the best interest of that victim mm -hmm. down the road. And sometimes when we work together and put our heads together, we can come to this. So I, I hope that you could come to the Fulton County Task Force meetings often okay, <laughs> and participate as much as possible. And I know that we will be standing behind you and provide any resources and assistance we can provide to you as well. Thank you. And I think you'll get that cooperation throughout. Uh, the Prosecuting Attorneys Council does so many things, and this is one of the great things that they do. I think that one of the complaints had been from advocates that sometimes we don't have all the training that we need. And it's important to learn that not only through the conferences, but there's newsletters, there's resources on the website. Um, and I think that you're, you've made it clear, you're available. I'm available. So Contact me, email me if you have a question advocates um, and not just advocates that work with prosecutors offices but even advocates that work for domestic violence nonprofits my trainings are actually open to those advocates and so you can actually go on the PACS website and see when those trainings are they are free Did you, you get say your free? they are free they are free um, they're day-long trainings um, you'll get a chance to um, talk to police officers other advocates and prosecutors that are at the trainings and I think that in itself really makes a difference. It does, and thank you so much for being one person that's making a difference. Thank you. I wanna thank Charlotte Jackson for being here today. I'll be back with some final thoughts about the PAC's advocacy of victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. The Prosecuting Attorneys Council of Georgia provides support and resources to all prosecutors all over the state. We are grateful to them for having a domestic violence and sexual assault resource prosecutor to help us seek justice for the victims of those crimes. With very limited resources to handle our large caseloads, the assistance of other agencies helps us overcome many of the challenges that we face in prosecuting domestic violence and sexual assault cases. I want to thank Charla Jackson, the Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Resource Prosecutor of the Prosecuting Attorneys Council of Georgia for joining us today. Thank you for watching Victim View. We'll see you next time.